We bought this Lane Cedar chest for a whopping $75 from the thrift store. Will we get our money back out of it? Let's see. All right, so the old outdated cushion on top had to go. So we found the screws that were holding it on and unscrewed them. Easy peasy. And then of course the wood on top had to go too. That part was a little bit harder. Using about 57 tools, we were able to bust through the little wood button things to find the screws that were holding it on. Some of the screws wouldn't come out though. So we ended up using some muscle to get it off. And then we were finally left with a clean and simple cedar chest top with a bunch of holes. Then we moved on to the outdated knobs on the fake drawers and of course threw them away. A non-negotiable here was that that scrolly detail on the front, that had to go. I was fully prepared for it to be a nightmare to get off, but it was just nailed on with a few pin nails, so that was awesome. Removing the pin nails wasn't fun though. They were long and really secure, but we finally got all of them either pulled out or nailed in all of the way. Oh, and one last part in this fun deconstructing phase, we removed the latch for the lock. These locks on Lane Cedar chests were all recalled years ago because of kids locking themselves in the cedar chest and they just aren't safe, especially if you have little kids. So we always remove them. Now for the fun part, fixing everything that I ruined. We sanded the wood underneath the scrolly stuff smooth with my new sander that I'm testing out. I cannot wait to compare it to my regular sander and let you all know if it's better or if it's the same because it's a fraction of the cost. Then I had to fill in all of these holes. We filled the big screw holes with my favorite quick wood filler since it's the best at bigger repairs. And then I used DAP plastic wood to fill in the small pin nails. Funny thing is, is I had a harder time with those pin nails than anything else. After lunch, I sanded all of the filler smooth, but I guess I didn't fill the holes on the fake drawers as good as I should have. So I filled them in with a little bit more of the plastic wood. And this is where I struggled the most with this makeover. The next morning, I sanded the wood filler smooth and was so excited to move on until I remembered that we never cleaned the cedar chest. So any oil or grime that was on the surface could have gotten smashed into the wood with all of the sanding that I did and then the paint just wouldn't stick as well. So before I did anything else, I cleaned it all off with crud cutter. But fun fact, when you get plastic wood wet, what happens? Yeah, it becomes soft and it basically just wiped off. So I had to put another coat of wood filler on, wait for it to dry, and then sand it all smooth again. Then we cleaned up all of the dust and I taped off the edges of the cedar chest so I wouldn't get any paint inside of it. Then I rolled on some Bin Shellac Base Primer that we had tinted in this gray color. I used my favorite mohair roller from Sherwin-Williams and a zebra paintbrush to put on the primer. I chose this primer for this piece because I wanted to create a base for the paint that would block stains from the raw wood, but also make it so then the paint would have even coverage. Oh, and since it was tainted in a medium shade of gray instead of white, I wouldn't have to paint as many coats of my darker paint on top of it to get full coverage. I rolled it on so the primer would get pushed into the oak wood grain, especially where it was down to bare wood. After the primer dried, I found some spots that needed filled, so we filled those in, let it all dry, sanded it smooth, and we put another coat of primer on. Then we let the primer dry again, and I sanded all of the primer with a fine grit foam pad. But I hadn't ordered any of the foam pads to fit the sander, so I kind of had a janky setup, but it worked. And I got all of the primer smoothed out. So I cleaned up all of the dust again, 
and somehow found it in myself to put a coat of paint on before going to bed that night. We picked out the Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trimming Enamel in this deep red color called Som Sommelier. I have no idea how to say that. But what is it with me and warm colors lately? I used to hate them, and now I am having so much fun with them. Anyway, I brushed it on with a zebra round paintbrush so you could see how well this paint levels out when you brush it on with even a budget-friendly quality paintbrush. The first coat was so thin and streaky looking, but I guess that's really not that surprising with red paint. Kind of a bummer though still. But we let the paint dry overnight and then I found some paint drips so I sanded those out and then sanded everything else with a fine grit foam pad just to make it feel nice and smooth. I cleaned up the dust again and painted on two more coats, letting them dry for at least four hours between coats. And I almost put new hardware on those faux drawers, but decided against it. So here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. I'm in love and I don't care who knows it. It is so warm and cozy now and with not too many and not too few frilly frills. What do you think of this new look though? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to follow us for more makeovers. Want to turn your hobby into cash? Click the link in my comments to download the free pricing guide that we use to buy and sell furniture.